We at MSPP believe that deep learning comes from the integration of instruction and practice. This is true in all of our programs. You're about to see three clips from one class meeting. The class topic is the assessment of suicidality. These clips are followed by some comments. The clips follow a typical teaching sequence of didactic instruction, demonstration by a professor, and guided practice with supervision. In the first clip, you'll see a brief portion of a lecture on suicide assessment. This is followed by a demonstration role play in which I interview a doctoral student, Lisa LaBeouf, who takes the character of a 16-year-old boy. In the third portion, another doctoral student, Tess Powell, interviews me in the character of a 17-year-old depressed girl. While students interview each other several times during the semester, each student in the course interviews me in a role play at least once so that I can learn about his or her clinical style firsthand and then give helpful feedback. Please watch the clips. What proportion of teenagers do you believe um, have serious thoughts of suicide? 25%. Okay, we got a 25% estimate. I was going to say around 60. A serious? Yes. It's 20 to 20. About a quarter of kids um, have serious, describe themselves as having seriously considered suicide. Um, and, the and the rates are reported in terms of white males and African American males and white females and African American females. Men complete far more often than, boys complete far more often than girls, men and women too, but um, it's about four to one, females attempt more than males. There's some interesting data on countries, um, and take a look at that and see if you get any impression um, of this. This is completed suicides, and the listing is basically from highest to lowest. So I, I got the impression from, the principal talked to me too, and he said um, that you had gotten into some trouble. He didn't give me a lot of details, um, but I was hoping we could talk to it, talk about it, um, and um, see if there's something we could figure out to make it work better around here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Tell me, what was the deal with the wires? Mm -hmm. Um, I decided not to go to class. And then the wiring room and cut the wires. So, like, what kind of wires? The wires from the lights on the stage. So serious wires. I didn't know. I right now, what did did you get hurt? Cause that stuff. No, good. Good. Okay. What happened when you got to the office? Um, they called my parents, shoved me in a room for a while, told me how big I screwed up. Okay. That sounds like a total drag, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were saying that some things here are boring and some things here are annoying. Mm -hmm. Can we start with the annoying ones? The math teacher. Um, it's like having a second mother, like I, I don't know, she's kind of, she won't leave me alone. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, I'm Miss Powell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do you know why you're here? Um, my mother makes me go to these places. Okay. You've been to a lot of places like this? I've been this? to a lot of places. Really? I am a school psychologist, and my job here is really just to meet all different types of kids and adults 
um, who may be experiencing some difficulty, just to get to know them a little bit better and see if I can help them in some sort of way. Yeah, that's about what they all say. That's what they all say. Okay. Have they talked to you at all about why you're there? Do you know why you're there? Um, well, she wants me to stop cutting. She being? My mother. Your mom? Okay. And how do you feel about that? I think it's none of her business. Okay. Well... If I want to cut, I'm going to cut. She can't stop me. Okay. So, so you feel like you're here today because your mom is kind of on your back, it sounds like, yeah. about all this cutting. What do you think about that? Is that true? Is what true? Is it true? Are you cutting? Yeah. Okay. And she's bothering you about it. It's none of her business. If I want to cut, I'm going to cut. Nobody can stop me. Is she the only one that has an opinion about it? <sighs> My guidance counselor, my doctor, nobody's business. None of, damn, none of the damn business. It's my business. So a lot of people have an opinion about it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And how do they all What's know? What's your opinion? I don't know yet. I want to find out how you're feeling. Obviously, it sounds like you're probably doing it to feel better in some sort of way. Yeah. And it doesn't help that everyone's telling you to stop. It's not that easy. They don't, they think I'm a little kid. I'm not a little kid. If I want to do it, I'll do it. In the third clip, Tess, the student who interviewed me, did a brilliant job. I played a very unhappy girl with a history of persistent non-suicidal self-injury, cutting, and intermittent suicidal ideation. Tess connected with me beautifully. She let me know that she could understand what I was thinking and feeling and did so empathically. Later in the interview, in the portion not covered by this clip, she assessed my level of suicidality competently and explored alternatives to cutting. She integrated what she was taught with exceptional skill and compassion. <laughs>